Okay, I'm back, and now we want to do lesson number 18, which is on reflection and refraction of light. So read your lesson objectives. Then this is going to correspond to chapter 28 of your textbook, uh, sections 2 through 7. So let's begin by talking about reflection. You've got to know the definition of reflection. So it's going to be the bending of a wave when it bounces off of something. So in the picture down there at the bottom, you have a mirror, and then the light is coming in, and then it is bouncing off the mirror, and then it's going out in this direction. So that's reflection, the bending of a wave when it bounces off of something. Now this happens for both electromagnetic waves, which is light, and it also happens for mechanical waves. So this could be an earthquake wave, and then it could be reflected off of uh, some rocks inside the earth. But for this lesson, we're only going to be talking about light waves and what they do. So there is, it's not much of a formula. So the formula for reflection would be the angle that goes in equals the angle that comes out. So it's such a simple formula, I didn't even bother to put it on there. But the angle that goes into a mirror has to be the same as the angle that comes out. Now normally, we're going to measure that angle this way. So you got that angle and then you got that angle. And those will be the same. But you also could measure this angle down here, and it would be the same as this angle over here. It doesn't really ma make much difference the way that you measure the angle. So the angle going in is the same as the angle coming out. So some interesting things about flat mirrors and, and the ref their images that they produce. So the first thing you ought to notice is the image produced in a mirror appears to be the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. Now you're not going to have to make a picture like this that shows how it happens geometrically, but just know that the image appears to be behind the mirror the same distance as it is in front of the mirror. And then we talked about how that could be used in order to aim the ball if we want to win at miniature golf. So what we do is we take the hole, which is the actual object, find its image, so reflect it off the side there, and then aim for the image of the hole, and then it will be reflected into the hole, the actual hole. Okay, then we talked about how a flat mirror can be bent into a curved mirror. And there are two kinds of curved mirrors, concave and convex. You should know the picture. So if I say draw a picture of a concave mirror, you should be able to make it. You should also know what does it do to light. So with the concave mirror, the light's coming in. And then as it's reflected, it goes to a point which we call the focus. And then with uh, the convex mirror, notice it spreads out the light instead of causing it to come to a focus. You should also be able to give me examples of where you find concave mirrors and where do you find convex mirrors. Okay, I wanted to show you it can be geometrically calculated where the image is going to end up. So if you have an object in front of one of these kinds of mirrors, you can geometrically show where the image would be. You're not going to do it. Okay, so just ignore this slide. You can also calculate where the image is going to be located using this formula. 
you're not going to do it. So don't worry about that formula. All right, then we had plane refraction. So this is going to be the bending of a wave. So notice it starts out exactly like reflection. The bending of a wave, but this time it's going to be the bending of a wave when it goes through something. So it could be going through water, it could be going through plastic, it could be going through glass. So it's going through some substance and it changes direction when it does so. And then there's a formula for it, which you don't need to know, but I just wanted to show it to you for comparison purposes, that it would depend on the substance that the light is going through. So that's called the index of refraction. So this would be the index of refraction um, of the uh, wave that is going into the material, and then it's the sine of the angle going in, and then it's equal to, we do the same thing on the other side, this would be the index of refraction of the material that it's inside of, and then this would be the sine of the angle uh, inside of it. So notice how similar this is to this formula up here. A little bit more complicated, but in some respects it's similar. Now what I want you to be able to tell me is why uh, does light slow down when it goes through a material? It really doesn't. Light travels at the speed of light. But what happens is that in a material, you're going to have atoms, okay? And then when the light hits an atom, it has to interact with the atom. So it's gonna cause the electrons to jump up and down. And then a split second later, it's gonna spit the light out, traveling at the speed of light. So this is the speed of light, and this is the speed of light, but it takes a while to get through the atom. So that by the time you go through the piece of material, you have slowed down, even though in between the atoms, you're still going at the speed of light. All right, so that's part one. Light slows down when it goes through a material. So the next step is, why does it bend when it goes through the material? And so the best way of illustrating this is with a car. So with a car, it has wheels on it. And then pretend that the car is going from dry grass onto mud. So dry grass up here, mud down here, the car is going in this direction. So you can think of this as being light rays that are going like this and like this and like this. So the light is traveling in this direction. And so what's going to happen is that this tire right here is going to get into the mud first and it's going to lose traction. And so these other wheels are still going at their normal speed and so the entire car is going to pivot and change direction into the mud. And so this is the basic principle behind why does light change direction when it goes into a substance. So I could give you a question on the exam in which I give you, and let's say that the mud is up here and then the dry grass is down here, and then I say, here's my incoming wave. What direction does it go? So does it go this way? Does it go this way? Or does it go this way? Okay, so what I want you to do, again, is think about the car, and the car has all four wheels in the mud, but then one of the wheels gets into the dry grass and it's going to speed up because it gets traction when that happens. And so see which way 
that would cause the car to bend? That could be a test question. Okay, and then another thing I want you to realize is that objects appear to be in different places because of refraction. So this is a person looking at a fish and the fish appears to be where the dotted line is. Okay, because we think that things go in straight lines. But in reality, what's going on is the fish is actually underneath that image of the fish. Okay, then we can have curved lenses. So we have flat mirrors, and then we had curved mirrors. Okay, and then you can have flat lenses, and then you can have curved lenses. And so there are two kinds of lenses, the same way that you had two kinds of curved mirrors. So you have the converging lens, and then the diverging lens. Be able to draw a picture of each one of them and show what happens to light when it goes through it. So you see the converging lens is very similar to the concave mirror. It causes the light to come to a point. And then notice the diverging lens is very similar to the uh, convex mirror and what it does. Okay, in the same way that we said that you could locate the image of an object in a concave or convex mirror, you can locate the image of an object in a converging lens and a diverging lens. Now the good news is you only have to be able to do it for one case. So let me erase some of this and let's make a fresh drawing. Be nice if we had some background music, elevator music while I'm doing erasing this. Make your own elevator music at this point. All right, there we go. So what we're going to do is here, this line is going to represent our equilibrium line. Then we need to take the lens and we need to straddle the line. So in other words, do not make your lens like that. What we want to do is the lens has to straddle that line. So make sure and do that on the exam. Now I'm, you know, I'm going to give you partial credit if you make some mistakes on it, but don't make simple mistakes. So make sure and have your lens straddling the line like that. Okay, now over here, we're going to make a candle. So this is gonna be the object. So that's gonna be the object, and what we need to know is where is the image of that object going to be. So our rules are going to be that light, when it is parallel to this line here, when it reaches the lens, it's going to go through the focus of the lens. So make a line going straight through that focus. And you might want to make it a pretty long line. So that still doesn't help us. So we need to have at least two lines so where the two lines intersect, that's going to be the image. So this is the object. We're trying to find the image of it. So our second rule is going to be make a line through the center of the lens. Okay, and then continue it. And then where these two lines come together, that's the image. So I'm going to make an upside down candle. The object is right side up, but it turns out that the image, I for image, is going to be upside down. So that's all that you need to be able to do on the exam. And so this corresponds to the picture that's on the right, and it's the upper one. So don't worry about the other two pictures. 
you can also calculate it. So notice this is the same formula as the one for the concave and convex mirrors. The same formula works for converging and diverging lenses. Now this one is what kind of a lens? This one's the converging lens. So that what we're going to do is say 1 over the focal, focal length. So we would measure the distance from here to here and then with a ruler that would be the F equals 1 over O so that's this distance right here so measure the distance with the ruler from here to here put that in there and then that's going to be plus 1 over I where I is the distance from here to here where the image is located at. Now I gotta give you two of the three letters. So I could tell you the focus and I could tell you where the object is and then ask you where's the image. Or I could tell you where the object is, I could tell you where the image is and ask you to calculate what was the focus of this lens. So I gotta give you two of the three and then you can solve it. And so here is a example of how to do that. Okay, then we talked about rainbows. So I might have given you the impression that all colors of the rainbow are going to be bent at the same angle when they go through a piece of glass. They're not. Because different frequencies of light are going to interact with the atoms of the glass differently. So some colors will react very weakly with those atoms and so they basically go right through the piece of glass and they don't bend much but others do so this the top picture shows how the color blue is bent going through a prism and then it shows the color red and how it's bent as it goes through a prism and now remember that red and blue are on opposite sides of the Roy G. Biv thing so that means that all the other colors are in between the red and the blue. So that if you take uh, light and you pass it through a prism, you get the rainbow of colors. Then we use that to explain rainbows. So that a single droplet of water is going to act like a prism. And so light, when it goes into it, is first going to bend because of refraction and then it's going to uh, bend again uh, due to reflection and then it's going to bend one more time due to refraction when it comes out and all the different colors of the rainbow are going to do this so that's part one you see a rainbow because every droplet acts like a little prism but it's more than that what causes the bow? So why is it that it makes the rainbow of colors into a bow like this? And so again, I would refer you to this little video here, the rainbow on YouTube, where he explains that. Well, I think that's it. So that takes care of this lesson. So we've got one more left to review, and I will see you in just a moment.